A rifle or a shotgun, you can be of any age. 44% of kids haven't seen a dentist in the last year. And that's yeah. because 80% of dentists aren't taking on children. Yeah. yeah. Now, that can't be right, can yeah. it? Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Welcome to The Talk, I'm JJ and Yobi. Tonight, Prince Harry breaks his silence following King Charles' cancer diagnosis and he reveals he's considering putting down more permanent routes in the US. Rishi Sunak insists the Conservatives' plan for the country is working despite a double by-election blow to Labour. And have we reached a dangerous new age in AI as a new tool allows users to create hyper-realistic video clips by merely typing out what they want to see? Joining me on the panel are James Max, Esther Kraku, Kevin O'Sullivan and Emma Wolf. But first, Prince Harry has insisted he loves his family and that he jumped on a plane to visit the King immediately after learning of his father's cancer diagnosis. In a bombshell interview at the Invictus Games, uh, sorry, Invictus Games countdown in Canada, the Duke of Sussex revealed he was grateful to have seen Charles in person, adding he hoped the shock diagnosis would have a reunifying effect on the royal family. I love, I love my family. The fact, that I was, the fact that I was able to get on a plane and go and see him and spend any time with him, I'm grateful for that. I've also found in, in my own life that um, sort of a, an illness in the family can have a galvanizing or sort of reunifying effect for a family. Absolutely. Is that possible in this case? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you know, I've, uh, throughout all these families, I see it on a, on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, the, again, the, the strength of the, of the family unit coming together. I think any illness, any sickness brings, brings families together. During the walk and talk in Whistler, Harry also revealed he's considering becoming an American citizen since moving to California. Do you feel American? Uh, <laughs> do I feel American? Um, no. I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how I feel. Would you think about becoming a citizen? It's, I, have, I have considered it, yeah. Yeah? yeah. What, would, what would stop you from doing it? I have no idea. I, that's, I'm, I'm here standing next to this with these guys. Yeah. And this, the American citizenship is, <laughs> is, is, a, is a thought that has crossed my mind, but certainly not something that's a high priority for me right now. Harry's revelation comes after he hurtled down a bobsled run at 60 miles per hour in, in taste of what athletes can expect at the Games. Harry quipped he could go down the track until the sun goes down, though Meghan said there was no way she would join her husband. Well, let's just start with Charles first. I think he did all right there, Harry. Uh, he, he didn't give away anything really that we didn't already know. Mm. I think he was quite respectful about his dad. Mm. He, uh, some people are going to say he should have said, I'm not discussing my father with you. But I think he did, I think he did the right yeah, thing. Yeah, you, you have to finesse it. And, and, and in his defence, and I can't believe I'm saying this, he didn't actually reveal his diagnosis or anything that would um, make the royal family distrust him more. I think it was interesting that he, he, he kind of um, slipped around the whole, you know, does illness bring family together and has that galvanising effect? And he didn't necessarily say it will bring my family together, but he said, you know, he does recognise that that is possible. I do think, though, that... I don't know if he's still in the kind of realms of delusion, thinking that he could really spare and do all the things that he's done, and suddenly, somehow, because his father is ill, it, you know, his stepmother that he insulted in his book, or his mother, uh, his sister-in-law, who he also insulted in his book, will somehow be like, oh, Harry, it's all right, because, you know, Charles is sick, so let's all get together. I, I just think he's living in cloud cuckoo but, land. But let's be really clear, this interview was about in, in Victor's Victor's yeah, yeah, it really was. That was and like and I'm not often excerpt. fair to Harry and Meghan, but this, this was an interview fully, it was on the slopes, he yeah. keeps referring back to the Invictus, the Invictus exactly, family. Yeah. The minute I heard that he was doing an interview with Good Morning America, I thought, you know, well, this is outrageous timing and la la, yeah. la 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 Why is he grabbing the spotlight again? Actually, it's very much a year to go so, till the Invictus exactly. Games. He responds to questions. Mm -hmm. He responds, Will Weave, who is obviously the son of Christopher Reeve, Superman, um, asks him, have you considered US citizenship? And yeah. he responds to that, but he's pretty kind of nonplussed about yeah, it. Yeah, I think... I and think, he responds yeah. to the question about It's about a Charles. massive moment. This is the son of the king saying he's considered 
taking Ameri American citizenship. It's going to be a huge he story. There. Was it's a huge, there. He's it's not the point. American. He's the son of the king. He doesn't have to take citizenship. I lived there for 10 years. I knew people who lived there 50 years. He said he's who were, considered who were, it. It's a massive story. It's outrageous. No, it's not, I think Kevin. it's a scandal. <laughs> and then, you, then they're all the they go, oh, I love my family. In other news, the moon comes out at night. I mean, big deal. Well, what's and he then, meant and to then say? He, I don't love my... No, I don't love them. Well, exactly. That's why it's not a story. I love my family. He's destroyed that love by the way he's behaved. And when he says, oh, you know, oh, you know, an illness in the family can bring us back together. Uh, well, yeah, in some families, in Christopher Reeve's son Will's family, uh, evidently it did. Uh, in the royal family, ask William. Uh, is, I, the, is the king's illness going to bring this family? No, I think, it is not. I think you're just overreacting. Here's um, an individual who no, I know who a story actually, when I see one. That's what yeah, I'm talking about. No, of this course you do. Of course story. you do, because you, you want to stir it up. I actually think Harry interviews very well, and I think in this instance he didn't give away too much. I think he was very respectful. And I think he 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 actually kicked away the US citizenship story yeah, because he never did. did. Yes, he, he said, did. I consider, I'm considering it. He, does, no, I'm he considering, didn't say, I'm considering, considering it. Considered he said, it. I considered it in the sense that, of course, you would consider where you are. Why? Because on Why? occasion... Because he lives there and he's married. I lived there. I didn't consider it. <laughs> if but if there were either tax reasons or other reasons... I wasn't planning to come back. I knew people who lived there 50 years who stayed on a green card. I didn't card. realise you, you were that old. You don't have to take American citizenship. You were so there 50 to, years? It's an act, no, I said I knew people who lived there 50 years and never oh. took citizenship. I never would have done. I considered staying there. I never would have taken citizenship. I think it's an act of treachery. Oh, no, I, I, I think you're over I think it's yeah. different when you've had kids, when you have kids in America. I think, actually, it feels different. You're married to an American. He said... I've considered it. You know, well, he didn't think read it at all. You know, that's the end of outrageous. the story. You say, you say it's a big story, but that's the end of the story. Because him saying, I've considered it, you know why, he's never, the story you know why he's never going to go through with it? For, for tax reasons. Because if you're an American no. citizen, it doesn't matter where you live in the world, you have to declare your income to it, the IRS. You no, look, I know about this stuff. But, but if this you live this. there, you, it's the same deal. It doesn't matter whether you're a citizen or not. <laughs> well, no, you live Megan there, I know does. this. I know this. Megan when you does. live there, you have to pay American tax and you have to pay your own tax in your own country as well. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether you're a citizen or not. He does not have to even consider becoming a citizen to stay there. How would it sound if he'd said, no, I've never considered it? It would have sounded... It would sound good. Well, no, <laughs> I, I think... Look, it, left it, the would, it, 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 it would be what he, the British people would hope for. No, this is a nonsense. I think you're just... Honestly, you, know, you people... <laughs> You're just, you're just pouring a bucket over a great story. What's no, the matter with there's you? No great no, exactly. story. We're just Honestly. pouring a. We're just talking a, We're pouring a bucket hey, over uh, someone who's, uh, who's uh, spilling uh, his uh, bucket. James, James, now, let, let me introduce just... you to journalism. I don't think you've met. <laughs> yeah, let me introduce you to common sense. I'm not sure you've met. Now, here's the point. Ooh, good retort. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. Aren't you the one they call Oscar Wilde? Ooh, no, they're, they're, James, they're the on. one they call the voice of common sense. <laughs> I think the point about this, which is that's, interesting, is actually what he talks about the family and where you did speak some sense is that because of the public damage that he has caused, that even though families, sometimes um, an illness can make you come to your senses on the basis that you realise that the institution that you've been fighting, the wars that you've been fighting, suddenly mean nothing when you're talking about somebody's something mortality. Real, something serious. And, it, and yeah. perhaps that can be a jolt of reality. However, he has caused so many issues yeah. within yeah. his family that, yeah. from the other side, they'll say, look, it doesn't matter whatever's happened, and I'm really sorry that you're suddenly yeah. feeling this empathy towards, you know, your father and, and what's happened. Which is natural. But do you realise what you did and the trouble you caused? That's the story. Yeah, that's it's the story, story. And, and that it goes so deep with William <laughs> that they even couldn't Don't meet. Don't tell me what a story is. I'll <laughs> tell you what a story is. No, no. He's that considering... How... He's How considering angry. becoming a citizen of a different story. He's not country. becoming... That is the... You know He's that considered is the it. Story. But look, I think there's a difference between how William feels and how... Charles feels. I think Charles and Camilla will welcome Harry back with open yeah, arms. Yeah, not Camilla. <laughs> Charles will. No, I think or Charles and Camilla will. Or, but, or William. But, but, yeah, I don't think I actually William think will. Camilla would. I yeah. don't think but she would. I think, I think, I think Camilla... Camilla would for Charles. I don't think Charles was that amused by this immature leaping onto a plane. I mean, he saw him well, he he saw was, for half no, an hour. Say that, but Charles, he has big issues going Charles on. Charles was supposed to jump on a, on a helicopter. He's a lady's helicopter. He and, did. And, and lady's routine. Half an hour. So, so, so he could welcome his son face to face and that's when I'll do it. Yeah, so I think Charles does And then, of course, Harry had to rush back to go to a tawdry awards ceremony in Las Vegas. Yes. The reason that meeting was so short was not Charles, it was Harry. He had to go back to the NFL awards ceremony in Sin City. Isn't that special? Yeah, but as I say, 
I still believe that Charles will welcome back. Okay, himself. but the real story. I agree with that. Yeah. The agree real story, though, is William. I don't think he that William will won't. ever no. forgive him. Absolutely. And I think he's deeply, Agreed. deeply hurt. It's different with a totally. child. You say, look, I'll forgive my son if I have to. Well, but I think can, William right. has. Listen, totally agree. Listen, totally. we agree with what you're saying, but if you keep saying the real story, you're going to get the journalists confused, yeah. okay? Because that's <laughs> the real story. Anyway, Harry also opened <laughs> up on children and family life during the interview. Uh, he gave a rare insight into Archie and Lilibet's personalities, saying the pair have an incredible sense of humour. Have a look. Just physically being in California, how have you processed the fact that there's so much happening back uh, with your family where you come from? I have my own family, right. so, as we all do. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, my family and my life in California is, is, is as it is. You know, I will, I've got you know, other trips planned um, that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll stop in and, and see my family as much as I can. That's my next question about your family. How's Harry the dad? How's what? How How's the Harry dad? the dad? I can't tell you. That's classified. Okay. You it's know, super you know, top right? secret? It's top secret. Really? No, the kids, Making lunches. The kids, and... the kids are doing great. The kids are growing up like all kids do very, very fast. Um, they've both got an incredible sense of humour and, you know, make us laugh and keep us grounded every single day like most, most kids do. So, um, yeah, I'm just very grateful to be a dad. Yeah. No, groundbreaking. Uh, hey, My uh, kids hey, are funny. Hey, uh, uh, the kids have got an incredible sense of humor. Well, with their parents, they've got to have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't laugh, <laughs> there, was no, there was no insight there at JJ, all. JJ, I hate to say if, it, but that wasn't an incredible insight into any no, kid's personality. Because, because every parent says how pretty their children are, yeah. and, and every parent says how funny their children are, and not to anyone else. On, on camera, I thought it was on camera good, people actually. say that, yes. I that was good. If you ask uh, a parent off camera, someone you're friends with, they'll say, so-and-so's been a real bloody little B-word this weekend. Do you know what I mean? Like, you would be more honest. He's never going to stand on TV and say, actually, uh, Lily Bet has got a terrible temper and she started biting and hitting I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. He's not, he's not <laughs> one to <laughs> bite her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be surprised because Harry yeah. is not one to hold back. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if it's actually yeah. Lily Bet's little brat. No, Archie, because Archie's they don't right have to deal with Lily Bet yeah. can't stand her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it must be the name. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, coming up, it's bad news for the Conservatives after a double by election defeat. So what does this mean for the election? That's next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. If it was Osama bin Laden, a terrorist as well, a war criminal as well. Would you be giving him a floor? Would you be asking for him to be interviewed and giving a space so he could explain himself? A woman can become a man and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. Yeah. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. I don't see any sign of forgiveness from the other members of the family for the terrible lies and disloyalty which he's shown. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. <laughs> King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. The palace released a new picture of King Charles showing His Royal Highness smiling and buoyant despite the shock news. Move over, Harry. When it comes to celebrity pals, William has just landed one of the biggest stars on the planet. Prince William has only gone and bagged Tom Cruise as a surprise celebrity guest for the London Air Ambulance charity gala he spoke at. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, is it? It may be that it's a more serious problem at the BBC than just her. I'm problem. giving her some objectivity because I think you've got to look at someone. Why are you well, going okay. up for? This is the plank of the week, Michael. Will. <laughs> bloody therapy session. <laughs> the problem is, Liz Truss is the most unpopular <laughs> Prime Minister <laughs> exactly. that we've ever had. And so yeah. they would have been better off calling it Unpopcon. Really. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nobody is, is spending any money. They're not prepared to do it. I mean, why is that? Uh, quite simple. The downturn in the spend is three simple words, financial fair play. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names. The New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn.
icon? What, what is that? And with the gun culture, <laughs> in 30 states, 30 of the US states, there is no minimum age for guns. As long as, it's a, as, long as it's a long gun. So, yeah, so a rifle or a shotgun, you can be of any age. 44% of kids haven't seen a dentist in the last year. And yeah. that's because 80% of dentists aren't taking on children. Yeah. yeah. Now, that can't be right, can yeah. it? Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to The Talk. Labour has handed a double blow to Rishi Sunak with its victories in what were to save Tory seats. Sir Keir Starmer's candidates overturned 10,000-plus Tory majorities in Kingswood and Wellingborough, despite a difficult week for their party. We are absolutely delighted. We've got two new uh, Labour MPs that will do a great job for the areas who elected them last night and these are really important results in a general election year. They can't be dismissed as some kind of midterm blues for uh, the government. The election is soon. It could be as early as May, if not May, a little bit later in the year. This is close to the general election time. And so we're really pleased with the progress that we made last night. The Conservatives admitted the results were disappointing. But the Prime Minister insists their plan uh, for the country is working and that local factors were to blame for their defeat, rather than any wider problems. Midterm by-elections are always difficult for incumbent governments and the circumstances of these by-elections were, of course, particularly challenging. Now, I think if you look at the results, very low turnout and it shows that we've got work to do to show people that we are delivering on their priorities and that's what I'm absolutely determined to do, but also shows that there isn't a huge amount of enthusiasm for the alternative in Keir Starmer and the Labour Party and that's because they don't have a plan and if you don't have a plan, you can't deliver real change. Sunak went on to downplay the by-election results as predictions for the general election. But experts warn the Tories are running out of time to turn their fortunes around. So the Conservatives were kind of quite keen to say, well, look, governments have trouble in by-elections. Yes, but not necessarily this much trouble. And I think also one crucial thing as we're about these by-elections, uh, the Prime Minister was trying to suggest that this was a mid-term contest. I have news for the Prime Minister. We are in the last year of this Parliament. He has to go to the country before too long. And this is the stage by which, even if governments have had trouble in midterm, they should now be beginning to show signs of recovery. With that cold comfort for Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister has been out visiting a police station in Essex today, perhaps with a subliminal message for any more of his candidates facing defeat. <laughs> Now, let's remind you, um, uh, I suppose, of the situation here. We have um, a Prime Minister who was just coming up with a load of old nonsense when it came out to explaining away. You can't say that this, these are by-election uh, results and they're always the same and turnout is low <laughs> and, you know, this is mid-term. It's not. This is a situation of their own making. They came to this parliament with a very significant majority. They have made the mistakes. It's not as if you can compare this to 97, in my opinion, because in 97, Blair had a plan. Yes, Tories were in disarray then, but Blair had a plan and he had a range of policies that were really drawing people in, as opposed to, you're just not this lot who are a bunch of incompetent idiots and will vote for anybody but you. And I think the problem for Rishi Sunak is that he keeps setting out what his priorities are and he hasn't delivered. He hasn't delivered on small boats. He hasn't delivered on growing the economy. He hasn't really delivered on inflation. And that's the only one that he can even claim that it is coming down, although it's kind of static at four, because it was going to come down anyway. And when it comes to measures that they could have put in place, they could have reduced tax. They could have simplified tax. They could have taken action on the NHS. They could uh, reduce the amount of money that's being wasted. They could have really made some inroads in some shape or form. And yet they miss, they fire blanks every single time. Now, we keep hearing, will they, won't they, when it comes to tax cuts. I think that is their last shot. If they don't cut taxes in the next budget, they are completely I mean, toast. That's, that's, if that's, they that's, cut that's, tax that's, next time, they may that's, have that's, a chance. What did James Hunt just announce? 
But he uh, uh, contrary P... to his promise yeah. that he was going to cut tax by 2p, he now won't be able to do that. Uh, another election winner for the Tories. I mean, this was a disaster. Uh, now, uh, what the Tories are clinging on to is that uh, you remember when uh, John Major, against all the odds, won that election in the early 90s when uh, the Tories were tipped to uh, be annihilated, just like they probably will be at the next election. And so but they're saying, well, we, we could be in the same situation. We could still claw this back. So there were by-elections uh, similar to Wellingborough and Kings with just before the general election that John Major won. And they were disasters for the Tories. Guess what? They lost a third of their vote in both of those by-elections. In these two by-elections yesterday, guess how much of the vote they lost? Two-thirds. Mm. They're done for. They're yeah. done for. I mean, the thing is, the Tories... is no. There's, it's no longer enough to make the right noises because they're facing two issues that I'm afraid they cannot surmount before the next general election. They face the issue of competence and trust and the lack thereof both, right? We don't trust the Tories to deliver on anything because yeah. for the last 14 years, they have been un unable, unable to do it. I mean, since 2018, just on the immigration point, on the illegal immigration point, just 1.3% of illegal migrants that have come into this country since 2018 have been returned, mm -hmm. right? So clearly, if you come into the UK illegally, you will probably never be removed. There's a 99% chance you will be allowed to remain in the UK. That's just one fraction of the issue. They don't have any competence and they, they completely lack the trust of the public. So at this point, we're on damage control mode. And I think it's really unhelpful when people like Simon Clark open their mouths to say, oh, it's Rishi Sunak leading us into destruction. Actually, this has been long in the making. And so it, you trying to make a name for yourself is not helpful. It doesn't matter what Simon Clark says or, you know, his failed... Yeah, the point, though. ...failed little coup. Yeah, of course. All it does is prove just how divided the party is yep. and how little confidence they have in their own leader. Rishi Sunak is deluded to be yeah. saying this stuff about midterm. <coughs> We're not fools. It's not midterm, mate. It's the dying days of this administration. To be saying things like, the plan is working. Stick with the plan. What, what plan, plan are you talking about? But isn't that the plan? Can I just ask you? Wait, 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 wait. Nothing is going to shift the polls right now. Well, I don't know if the Tories are stupid or arrogant, because in or Wellingborough, both. <laughs> or both. In, <laughs> Wellingborough, <laughs> in Wellingborough, they had Peter Bone, who then, he, by their own investigation, he's a sex pest, he's a bully, <laughs> so they, they took him off. They replaced him with his girlfriend. They still allowed him to go around campaigning <laughs> for his girlfriend. Meanwhile, Sunak did not go ever to Wellingborough. He's put in no effort to try go and, and win votes. Where um, and. Sorry to bring in reform here, but reform they did okay. But I think they're over. I think it's being overstated how well they did when UKIP were running there in 2015. They got near 20 percent of the vote, mm. double basically what reform have gotten. Yeah. So I, and, and, and and yeah, granted, Nigel Farage the. The, the magic stick. He's not involved at the moment, does, but when he does come in... He reform has and come from nowhere. Nowhere. What does this mean, have come we quickly got another, from nowhere. We got another by-election on the way, and at that by-election, the Labour candidate, although still on the papers as the Labour candidate, has had the party withdraw their support. Yeah. What does that do? Does it mean that people go back to the Tories? Does it mean that they go back to their former MP? What does it mean? It means people uh, don't vote. That's and, and maybe I'm the not, real story it, it, is the really low turnout, because I think people, many, myself included, feel, what are we going to vote for? Who are we going to vote Labour for? Labour are going to win... Uh, will win the next election, obviously, but they're going to win it by default, because if you look at these two... Uh, I, think it, I think I'm right in saying it well in both these seats that uh, Labour actually uh, didn't particularly increase their vote That's at right. all. Compared uh, it's side. just that the Tory voters all stayed on their backside and didn't come out and vote. However, that uh, syndrome will uh, predominate, will dominate the election and <coughs> Labour will win because Tories will sit at home or they might vote for reform. What does it say about the, our society, I guess, that Labour weren't damaged at all from this whole anti-Semitism mm. round? Yeah, I was really Pressing. disappointed yeah. by that, but I knew it. I yeah. knew it. Anti-Semitism <laughs> is an absolute scourge. It's a disgrace. Uh, the, that should have affected the vote for Labour. Mm -hmm. But in this country, I'm afraid that anti-Semitism uh, or, or, or opposing anti-Semitism is not necessarily a vote winner. And I have another... It's disgusting and disgraceful, but true. And I, I don't think a lot of people see it as, as racism. They don't. The problem. But, but my, my biggest worry now is February 29th is the Rochdale election. Labour have taken the whip from um, Mr. Mr. Afzal uh, Ali. Yeah. But I still think he's going to win. Yeah. Even though he said all these horrific yeah. things, I still think he's going to be the one George to win. Galloway. Or George Galloway. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. died in the wall anti-Semite. Yeah.
yeah. yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. It is. It is very concerning, and I think that for a lot of Jewish people in this country, I think people are genuinely concerned um, at the the lack of political response and and also the lack of empathy with that particular story. But let's remind you of the other candidates for that Rochdale by election, uh, as our Ali is on the ballot for the Labour Party despite his suspension. Independent candidate Mark Coleman, Simon Danchuk for uh, Reform UK, Ian Donaldson for the Liberal Democrats, Paul Ellison for the Conservative. Conservative Party, George Galloway for the Workers' Party of Britain, independent candidate Michael Howarth, independent candidate William Howarth, Guy Otten for the Green Party and Ravin Subortner for the official monster raving loony party and the independent candidate David Tully. So those are all of those uh, candidates. Now coming up, more than a thousand prospective recruits have been blocked from signing up for the army, all because of their tattoos and body piercings. That's next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. If it was Osama bin Laden, a terrorist as well, a war criminal as well, would you be giving him a floor? Would you be asking for him to be interviewed and giving a space so he could explain himself? A woman can become a man and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. I don't see any sign of forgiveness from the other members of the family for the terrible lies and disloyalty which he's shown. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of the street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. <laughs> King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. The palace released a new picture of King Charles showing His Royal Highness smiling and buoyant despite the shock news. Move over, Harry. When it comes to celebrity pals, William has just landed one of the biggest stars on the planet. Prince William has only gone and bagged Tom Cruise as a surprise celebrity guest for the London Air Ambulance charity gala he spoke at. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry gonna sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way, couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, it's him. It may be that it's a more serious problem at the BBC than just her. I'm problem. giving her some objectivity because I think you've got to look at someone. Why are you well, going okay. up for? This is the Plank of the Week, Michael. Will. <laughs> bloody therapy session. <laughs> The problem is, Liz Truss is the most unpopular <laughs> Prime Minister exactly. that we've ever had, and so yeah. they would have been better off calling it UnpopCon. Really. <laughs> um, Nobody is, is spending any money. They're not prepared to do it. I mean, why is that? Uh, quite simple. The downturn in the spend is three simple words, financial fair play. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names. The New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? And with the gun culture, <laughs> in 30 states, 30 of the US states, there is no minimum age for guns. As long as, it's a, as, long as it's a long gun. So, yeah, so a rifle or a shotgun, you can be of any age. 44% of kids haven't seen a dentist in the last year. And that's yeah. because 80% of dentists aren't taking on children. Yeah. yeah. Now, that can't be right, can yeah. it? Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to the talk. Uh, strict recruitment rules on tattoos and piercing have prevented more than 1,200 Brits from fighting for king and country, despite a chronic hiring crisis plaguing the army. The data shows that more than 800 potential soldiers were blocked from joining because of their body ink, while a further 400 were banned from boot camp because of piercings. The army relaxed its rules on tattoos 10 years ago, but the force still refuses to hire anyone with ink above the collar line 
or on the hands or piercings that change the way you look. Capita, the outsourcing giant tasked to get a grip of the hiring crisis, has begged the army to not only relax its rules on body modification, but to also allow those with hay fever and asthma to join up. The army... Sorry. <laughs> hay fever? The army say they require people to be able to meet and maintain very high standards, but having failed to reach its recruitment target for regular soldiers every year since 2010 and with talk of a wider war in Europe potentially on the horizon, is it time they re-evaluated what is acceptable? I would say yes, it probably is. No. I mean, tattoos, uh, I, uh, I think I'm probably the only person in Britain who doesn't actually have a tattoo, although maybe some of the rest of us don't. But so many people, particularly young people, the people of the right age to join the forces do have tattoos. And, you know, personally, being middle class and middle aged, I don't particularly like... Uh, uh, tattoos above the neckline, but does it really matter that much? Let's have a look at the character. Let's uh, not judge the skin. Let's judge the character beneath the skin. And considering our army is now down to 73, 74,000, uh, nowhere near enough to defend a country of 70 million, uh, worrying about whether or not people are tattooed, uh, I should say, ought to be jettisoned right away. But the thing is, I think we have to look at why the army is struggling to recruit people. Obviously, the fitness standards is one of them. They've, 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 they've had to turn... <laughs> no, but this is, a, this, is a, this is a very small proportion. Of, of the hundreds of thousands of people that are turned away from joining the army, a big reason is because they don't meet the fitness standards. Frankly, Britain is getting too fat, surprisingly. <laughs> I don't think the tattoos is the main issue. I actually think it's... So that's the story pay. we're talking I think, about. I, I think, <laughs> that's the point. I think it's pay. If you actually offered people more money yeah, but what to about join the tattoos? army, you wouldn't, okay. you wouldn't have to turn Can away I just say, with, with, with tattoos because you'd be able to get more suitable recruits anyway. But, but if, I think the story is we shouldn't be But the thing uh, is, it's not just tattoos. It's tattoos above the collar and, and hands and body, modif body modifications that change the way you look. You can have tattoos. They just can't be above your collar. Why not? Because you look like a monster. Esther, Esther, matter? Esther that's what you want. You want frightening. You want no, you don't. I'm sorry, no. Esther. Okay, so when you're taking on Russians and Ukrainians, <laughs> when you're taking on scary Russian soldiers, I want... Have you seen Braveheart? <laughs> I want our men and women of war. Uh, oh I want God. them to look to like Shrek. I no. want them to look <laughs> really scary. I want them to have shaved heads oh, and scary idea, tattoos. This is and a Game of Thrones. Okay. <laughs> they are soldiers. They are fighting. Totally. Look, young people don't want to fight for this country. I cannot believe we're That's being a, choosy. No. What a oh. stupid thing to say. Oh, oh. some young people do. Okay. And some we have record James. James, 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 we have record low recruitment. Yes, if we had conscription right thing. now, do you realize how much people it's snow... because we've denigrated the services the snow... of what they do and what we pay them. No, because the snowflake generation do not want to go and fight for this some country. Some of them do. Would you, would, you, would you want your son um, joining the army if he's making 15 pounds? Of course I wouldn't. Pounds. Of course 15, I wouldn't. There you go. One five Can we just get back to the story? No, but that, it Why matters. On earth? It matters, though. If you wouldn't want your son to join the just... army, then how can you say young people just don't want to join the army? You have reasons for not wanting your son to join. But, but, but... Is it relevant? But, it is yes. relevant. But the I'm tattoos... Can we but... get back to You're not willing to put your money on your mother. if they have tattoos on their faces, or the odd body piercing. I do, because they mostly going, they're on ceremonial duties. If they you are, can't have that if you're yeah, trying to encourage not. tourists oh, into the country. Not. That's their main job. Oh, James, <laughs> what is the point? What is the point? Why can't they have tattoos on because their face? Because it's gross. Who cares? It's grotesque. How, it's, they're, they're, they're soldiers. It doesn't Precisely. matter. I think the role um, and prestige of, of a soldier has changed. And the reality is, most people now don't want to be in the army. So if, you, if someone's got... I don't know, someone's name tattooed on, on their face, that shouldn't stop them from being in the army. Like really? Kevin says, yeah, what, really. What if, what if they have bum hole Look, tattooed if, on their left? If you have tattoos that show violence, sex acts, or illegal drugs, then, you, then you're banned. Fine. Really? But, but, but have it, having some... some well, like moron. Drugs, if you had moron tattooed well, on your cheek... Well, then that would that be OK. But you see, this is the okay. thing. You have, a tattoo, you have a soldier with moron tattooed on their left cheek, shaking King... Uh, or, like, saluting to King Charles. That's embarrassing. Well, That's pathetic. By the way, by the way, I'm we so live in a country with 67 million people. We can do that. You see millions of them, don't you? <laughs>
<laughs> you can do better. No, I have no I, idea. I, I These are armed if, forces. If it's the armed forces, uh, you have to actually maintain. And if you want to get people to join, you've got to increase um, the prestige of joining. And if any, and, and, you and know, pay. if anybody, and there are no standards, mm. and you're just kind of recruiting anybody just to shove them in as cannon well, fodder, here's the thing. then fine, go Why ahead. Why is it low standards to look down? Why is it low standards to have tattoos on your face? Oh, because it's, on, it's because Why it's are you grotesque. even asking that it's question? Grotesque. Because because you are trapped in your middle class James, world. James, do you seriously There's nothing want wrong every... with tattoos on your face? Yes, there is. Do you, yes. Yes. Do you, yes, you there want is. every there... soldier to look like Prince William? And it's not about look looking like terribly... Prince William, but oh, you right, don't James. look like yeah. a crazy Kevin, person. Kevin. If you tattoo... I'm sorry, if you tattoo your face, there's something unscrewed. No, there isn't. Yes, no, there's there is. not. No. Yes, there is. Uh, uh, Esther, there's not. That's a real classic statue. That's not a classic statue. And let's look at the army, where they recruit from. The majority of places they recruit from are from the poorest areas in this country. Listen. So if you're going to... If you're going to target... If you're going to target the poorest areas of the country where people generally have more tattoos than, say, the most affluent people, then you then you should make it open for all Why do we assume that, that working class people don't have class? Why do we just assume uh, that because that, you're no, working you're class... class. I'm, no, saying, it's I'm saying it's OK to have tattoos. facial tattoos is uncouth uh, no, it's and not. grotesque. No, it's not. And I'm uncouth. sorry, so working what? class it doesn't matter if you're uncouth. <laughs> In your, if you're in the yeah. army, who cares? Follow well, the rules. Middle class, okay. class shoot track. your gun and follow the rules. Exactly. <laughs> be strong, be brave, and go. Be willing to die for your country. It, anyway, well yeah. said. From national security to the health of the nation. Now, month-long waits for GP appointments hit a record high last year, according to new NHS figures. That's despite Rishi Sunak vowing to cut waiting lists as one of his five key pledges. One in five, one in twenty, sorry, patients had to wait at least four weeks to see a GP in England in 2023, with patient groups claiming the figures show how the family doctor is fast becoming an endangered species. The NHS insists it's delivering more GP appointments than ever before, but with a health service crippled by continued strikes and doctor surgeries flooded with patients whose hospital procedures have been cancelled, fewer appointments are being delivered. The government says it's it, it has met its target of 50 million additional GP appointments last year, but critics claim we'll soon see GP deserts similar to the dire situation with NHS dentists. Well, um, this is yet another one of Rishi Sunak's key pledges falling by the wayside, isn't it? He was stupid to make these five pledges and uh, he's absolutely failed to cut NHS waiting lists and he may be claiming that there are 50 million more GP appointments, but GPs themselves are saying they have less and less time for, mm. for patients and less and less, you know, more and more admin and all of that. Um, to me, the family, the, the term family doctor has become meaningless, completely meaningless. I can't remember the last time I saw the same doctor more than once in a row, you know, more than twice in a row. GPs have no kind of history. They don't know their patients medical. They don't know your children. They don't know your history. They cut, there's no continuity of care. So you waste time each time telling the same doctor the same issues if you have, say, a, a condition that you need to talk to a doctor about. And again, you know, when patients can't see a GP quickly, they end up in hospital. They end up putting more pressure on A&E. So we have this revolving door. I think it's an absolute crisis. And I think GPs need to start uh, working a five-day week again. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's an absolute crisis. I agree with you. Most GPs are working a three-day week. Yes, but I think it, I think it is an absolute crisis. But I actually think it's worse than that because what this has done, the lack of GPs, has been long in the making, and. That has fueled this demand for A&E services. That has fueled the problems within hospitals. That has confused the public as to what our NHS is there to do. And also, I think we've failed to use technology in the sense that online doctors, I think, could deal with a lot of situations that, frankly, I would say quite often you possibly know what's wrong with you. And do you really need to go and sit in a, in a doctor's surgery every single time you've got a cough and a cold or flu or a temperature or whatever it may be? Now, does that mean that online is a solution? No, but we should be using technology to help doctors deliver a better service. We should be making sure that there are more GPs available, and we haven't. We've denigrated the system that we have, and also because... Um, uh, medicine has become much more complicated, it means that GPs have to know more, do more, and be able to prescribe more in, in all sorts of different ways. And I think that that has led to a crisis within and, and pharmacists. The, the NHS. And often, pharmacists. often you go and you're trying to get a GP appointment because you know you need antibiotics for something. For example, a pharmacist is a very experienced person who's been working. They train for years. I think they train for seven years. 
um, pharmacists could be delivering a lot more. And, you know, I know there is a plan to, to the use thing pharmacists is, more. Every time we talk about the NHS, it's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> we never talk about the NHS in the, con in, the, in the sense of this is a service that we are paying for. We are paying a lot of money for with our taxes, and yet we're not receiving that service. Oh, it's just about tinkering around the edges, you know, uh, removing pension caps for, for doctors so they don't retire early and all of that. The, the NHS is not working. And in any other context, if we're receiving a service, we think, okay, where can I go? What are the alternatives? There, is, there are no alternatives to the NHS. So we're stuck with this creaking system. So every time we talk about it, it's like this national religion. Oh, all you have to do is pump more money. All you have to do is ship in some nurses from the Philippines, and then we'll be fine. Let's talk about fundamentally changing the NHS so that if you need medical care, you don't have to rely on this broken, creaking fair, system that we're of, forced to fund. It's not lot, working. A lot of people have been saying, where's Streeting said this several years ago, that, you know, it's not the sacred cow anymore that we need to be well, brave enough. Politicians need to be brave enough to question the model, to question whether people should but they're be fined. But they, not they're not. No, they're because not. they don't think... West they won't Street think... won't be either. And he won't exactly. be either. Exactly. Yeah. Every Long politician term. talks big, but they're not going to do anything but about also, it. But also, primary don't care is us, quite different. They don't see us as customers hospitals. paying for a service. They see us as morons continually happy to fund this creaking service with our taxes. And until we actually demand a because service it's like that a works, nothing is going to change. I'm sorry. I'm so old I can remember... You know, when I was a kid, my mum would phone up the GP and say, Kevin's really sick. And the doctor said, well, I'll be round at yes. five. They used to come the round family and doctor visit. would come yeah. round. Visit or to go around the whole village or the whole town at night. Uh, how have we got from that to what we've got now, where uh, if you're lucky, you get a phone call through. Uh, the other week, I wasn't very well, and I wanted to see my uh, GP. The best I managed was to get through to the reception who started saying, well, exactly what's wrong with it? I've got a cough. Uh, what kind of cough is it? I said, excuse me, when did you take your medical degree? I, know. I, know. I mean, <laughs> it is Well, ridiculous. Kevin, try fighting for an appointment for your three-year-old who's sick. Do you know what I mean? That should... A poorly child, in uh, like, like when I was a child, they would come around. The yeah, family. Do you, do you know, know. Why, do you know doctor the would come, come around from? at the end of their shift. Most of these, most of these doctors are going to private medical care because if you pay, I don't know, like seventy pounds a month for private medical insurance, you actually get to jump the queue. Yeah. And this is an idea that Tony Blair 70. proposed. Well, yeah. 70. Yeah, depends, 70. depends on your age. For the what older, is this for, the, <laughs> for, the older, for the older people, it might be more. But you could actually might jump more. the queue. Might be right? more. <laughs> You're 70 quid a month for private Listen, health I'm, I'm insurance. Listen, I'm 27 and healthy. We're not going to look after you for that. I don't need to Which decade that are you talking about? Yeah. The 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got private well, health, health insurance, anyway, have you? Anyway, that's besides the point. <laughs> Emma? Yeah, well, there was some really interesting... I don't know if you guys saw recently the findings, the study yesterday, showing that exercise is far, far more effective for, uh, for, for depression and for anxiety and all of that than antidepressants. It's been proven. Yeah, of course. They're far more effective to go for a walk or go for a run than to uh, take antidepressants or, or do cognitive behavioural therapy. Can I ask you a question about that? Though? Anyway, can because I just... The question can, about that... Though. Can I actually just finish what I was saying, which was table tennis? <laughs> table tennis, <laughs> on, that, on that point, table tennis is now going to be prescribed on the NHS. Uh, you could be served up a course of ping pong if you do actually... If you do actually manage, it's not ridiculous at all. It's called social prescribing. Well, but the thing is, wait, because, wait, 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 because I've just let explained. Let's join the queue. Okay. Let's let yeah. finish the queue card. Yeah. Doctors are being encouraged to do more social prescribing, which involves telling patients to try healthy activities like gardening, painting, cooking, and sports instead of relying on medicine. What's wrong with that? No, it's just it's common sense. Why should we? Why do you need a GP appointment? Exactly. For, that's, that's why it's not, ridiculous. Not because the GPs but this are is, wrong. This is the question well, I wanted to ask. Doing which is, it. Why have we ended up where the NHS is suddenly prescribing? things which are a combination Ridiculous. of common sense and also where is the self-responsibility for realizing yeah. what it is that you are supposed to do to look after yourself yeah, yeah that's but then... like saying don't bother telling obese patients to lose weight yes yeah. of course yeah. people should do it yeah. but this is the situation that we have yeah. and therefore doctors are going to say things like maybe get out more maybe do some <laughs> gardening maybe get out into the fresh air we yeah. well yes but if it's effective yeah. It's better than putting them why on the Why should I listen to you? Because you're a doctor. Exactly. Because you're, they have you're to You're telling me gardening's good for you. You're a doctor. Well, why don't you just scoff at fat Nanny's, people and people who are depressed? Skate, and... Nanny state claptrap, nannies. I mean, <laughs> prescribe me medicines, not gardening. Absolute nonsense, in my view. Uh, coming up, <laughs> though, a new artificial intelligence tool that allows you to create realistic videos from text prompts uh, has set the internet alight. Uh, we'll have more of that next on the talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. If it was Osama bin Laden, 
a terrorist as well, a war criminal as well, would you be giving him a floor? Would you be asking for him to be interviewed and giving a space so he could explain himself? A woman can become a man and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. I don't see any sign of forgiveness from the other members of the family for the terrible lies and disloyalty which he's shown. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. <laughs> King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. The palace released a new picture of King Charles showing His Royal Highness smiling and buoyant despite the shock news. Move over, Harry. When it comes to celebrity pals, William has just landed one of the biggest stars on the planet. Prince William has only gone and bagged Tom Cruise as a surprise celebrity guest for the London Air Ambulance charity gala he spoke at. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen! <laughs> It may be that it's a more serious problem at the BBC than just her. I'm problem. giving her some objectivity because I think you have to look at someone. Why are you well, going okay. up for? This is the plank of the week, Will. <laughs> bloody therapy session. <laughs> the problem is, Liz Truss is the most unpopular <laughs> prime minister <laughs> exactly. that we've ever had, and so yeah. they would have been better off calling it unpopcon. Really. <laughs> um, Nobody is, is spending any money. They're not prepared to do it. I mean, why is that? Uh, quite simple. The downturn in the spend is three simple words, financial fair play. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? And with the gun culture, mm -hmm. in 30 states, 30 of the US states, there is no minimum age for guns. As long as, it's a, as, long as it's a long gun. So, yeah, so a rifle or a shotgun, you can be of any age. 44% of kids haven't seen a dentist in the last year. And yeah. that's because 80% of dentists aren't taking on children. Yeah. yeah. Now, that can't be right, mm -hmm. can it? Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Welcome back to The Talk. OpenAI has revealed a new tool that has sent shockwaves around the world due to its truly scary capacity to generate hyper-realistic videos. The industry leader, famous for chatbot ChatGPT, has launched Sora, which is capable of making videos up to a minute long that adhere to a user's instructions on both subject matter and style. The videos used to promote the new software have already stunned users, bringing to life woolly mammoths, a snowy street in Tokyo, and two pilots who look eerily human. And this all comes as fears grow over the real dangers of deep fakes. After sexually explicit AI-generated images of Taylor Swift spread rapidly online, and as hugely significant elections are just around the corner on both sides of the Atlantic, Look, the issue with AI, whenever we talk about, oh, this new technology is so scary, it's not just the fact that you know people can make nefarious content with it or sway elections or whatever. It's the actual power of, of, of governments to legislate in time. So every time they legislate for the latest scary technology, it's out of date. And now you have another sort of scary technology that can create porn from, from the images of, 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 of pop stars. And how do you legislate against that? And I actually think there's something extremely uncomfortable about technology that's just designed to mimic someone's likeness. So we know that movie movie studios are using that sort of technology to cut out basically all extras. This is why you have these actor strikes because they're not getting work because once the, the studios get their likeness, they just reprint it on many sort of movie sets and they don't have to use them at all. You have Taylor Swift, once she's doing a concert, now someone is creating this porn of her at a concert, basically. And that's what we really need to, to, to deal with. How can the, the government actually legislate in a way that doesn't become outdated when it's supposed to come into effect? So, uh, just a question. Uh, so this technology, you know, could I, in theory, just put uh, Taylor Swift having sex and it'll come back yeah. realistic? Yeah, well, exactly, that, but, yeah. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Sounds slightly risky. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. So, yeah, so, so there are some rules that they have. So you're not supposed to be able to create sexual uh, imagery, okay. extreme acts of violence, that kind of thing. But people are finding ways around it. Yeah. But like, and if, that's, if, just, if that's I, just skimming the stuff. If, if I type in uh, James Max, Kevin O'Sullivan, threesome, it, it might come up with. <laughs> with oh, <laughs> Lord. I don't even want. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely why? not. This why? technology must be banned. <laughs> why, why did that come to your yeah. mind? Honestly, Look, I think, by the way, we're not think... a threesome. There's just two of us. <laughs> yeah. You can but, join in. I'll join in. But we've, yeah. we've, seen things, we've seen things before, though, where uh, we've seen deep fakes used. We saw Sadiq Khan talking about that particular aspect where uh, his voice was, um, you know, simulated, if you like, to say something explosive. We've seen Trump with various things. So y you have these uh, methods of technology and, and the danger that it can have. And as you say, um, mm -hmm. legislation can be very slow and far behind. And in fact, it still is. When it comes to, for example, broadcast, you look at mainstream broadcast and you have rules to adhere to, advertising standards as well for advertisements. But then, of course, you can say and do all sorts of things elsewhere. So if we don't have proper legislation, and uh, whether it's MPs, not only in this country, but also globally taking proper action and making sure that people are held accountable, it's the same thing as free speech. Free <laughs> speech is, is great, but you have to help be held accountable for your actions. Isn't yeah, but I don't think legislation uh, will, will work. I mean, that's the problem. The genie exactly. for all of this stuff is out of the bottle, no, and right. I think it will be almost impossible to control. Mm. Legislation won't work because the MPs don't understand it. They don't understand well, any yes, of this stuff. They, they <laughs> do not well? understand. Understand any of this stuff? They don't create it. They don't understand it. It's the, it's the guys in Silicon Valley that are creating, or you know, the, the, it's the geeks who, Did you see who rule the there universe. Was a, there was a video of uh, Sadiq Khan saying, "I'm proud to be a member of the Labour Party. We're against uh, racism and all. all, all we're anti-racism. We're anti-racism anti and anti-Semitic." And everybody thought this is a fake news, but it, wasn't. <laughs> it was him screwing up. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's what you're going to start doing: seeing people blaming. AI yes, for all their mistakes. Yeah, and that's, that's another aspect of it, yeah. Right, now it's time for small talk. <laughs> Jimmy Max, you have the first one. When are you coming that? back? <laughs> uh, right, Very this good. is... Um, I mean, it's, it's a music story, so this is about Paul McCartney. So back in 1972, um, Paul McCartney had a bass guitar that was originally taken from the back of a van uh, back in 72, and he's been hunting for it ever since. Now, uh, he put out a plea last September saying, can anybody who knows about the whereabouts of a Hofner bass guitar um, put it out there? And, uh, you know, there it was on the front page of the Sun newspaper uh, today. Uh, yesterday seems so far away, Paul McCartney has finally been reunited with his long-lost bass guitar 50 years after it was stolen. They say this guitar, uh, bought for 30 quid, could now be worth up to ten million pounds. So you know, a family in Sussex, they found yeah. it in their attic. I mean, <laughs> quite how or what or where or when. But anyway, oh, yeah. he's been reunited with his guitar, which I think is rather splendid. <gasps> Why is it worth so much money now? Because it belongs to Paul McCartney. Yeah. Well, and, but in, in their attic, like what the? You, at least say like you dug it up from your garden. <laughs> yeah. found, uh, some bloke found it in his roof. Yeah. yeah. I, By the way, James, are these new glasses? Uh, they are new glasses. Yes. Yeah. Fetching. Do you think Thank they make you look intelligent? <laughs> Because uh, if so, I've got bad news for you. <laughs> I don't need glasses to make me look intelligent. Kevin, so I've got the next one. Uh, uh, following a rocky year for this morning, uh, the new permanent presenters for the daytime show have been unveiled. Kat Dealey and Ben Shepard, the dynamic duo, yeah. will now be at the helm during weekdays, replacing temporary duo Alison Hammond and Dermot O'Leary. The pair have been locked in talks for some months and have since been hailed as class acts by viewers reacting to the news. So at long last, this morning has permanent presenters. Uh, no more sleepless nights for me. <laughs> I know. Am I the only one who does not care? Who no, 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 you're not the only one who doesn't care. No, no, you really are not. No, I care. What about, about Alison Hammond? Alison I Hammond? love Alison Hammond, she but can't I'm just hoping. Interview. <laughs> She yes. oh, right. interview. That, that's which is why, why I didn't get the gig. It's oh. why it's better for Friday. But I have to say, I'm very pleased, though, that at least we got some people who I... F I just hope they got the memo about innuendo. We need to have innuendo <laughs> uh, on that show. Otherwise, they're dead in the water. I don't know Kat Dealey, but Ben Shepard's a very, Any very nice JJ's. guy. And they're both very good professionals. And uh, the thing about uh, Holly and Phil that they were underrated for, they were very, very good at interviewing. Alison yes. Hammond couldn't interview her way out of a paper bag. Ooh. So that's why these two, they're, they're sort of proper journalists. She so. could fall off her map, though, into the water, though, which is very amusing. Yeah. Right, Emma, you're next. <laughs> OK, well, it feels like this evening. The most stressful industries to work in have been revealed. 
Researchers reveal the most stressful industries to work in, with health and social work taking the hotspot. Three and a half thousand people per hundred thousand workers in the sector had stress-related illnesses caused or worsened by their employment. This industry obviously includes workers like doctors, therapists and nursing home assistants. Yeah. Other industries with mega stress ranking high on the list were public defence, including prison officers and security guards, followed by education, finance, retail and property. Interestingly, there was no mention of talk show panelists anywhere on this list. Yeah, well, uh, that's well, surprising. Esther, you work. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, I can absolutely believe. I think there's people underestimate the amount of physical work you have to do when you do care work. Like, mm. you know, especially depending on the age of the person you're caring for, you know, having to move them. There's loads of techniques that you have to learn, even when you're like literally shifting them from yeah. one side of their bed to another. You know, sometimes they can be quite irate with you. They're not happy to see you. Giving them medication can be difficult. There are loads of legal constraints as well. So you have to write down literally the time that you give them medication and everything. It's, it's, it's actually a lot, a lot more strenuous than people understand. So that doesn't surprise me at all. But if, if you do and you enjoy it, you want to know about a stressful job? I was a TV critic for 12 years, watching television oh, and saying Oh, it's come crap. off it. Absolutely that not. That is stress. <laughs> no, it's not. That's, That's stress. Okay, Esther, you're so next. What you got? To, to actually something stressful. A flight travelling from the Netherlands to the US was forced to turn around after maggots rained down on passengers from an overhead locker. The maggot? Like worst nightmare. Maggots. <laughs> Holidaymakers travelling with Delta Airlines on Tuesday were forced to fight off the creatures. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. Ah, ah. which made their way out of a carry-on bag containing a rotten fish. After the bag had been identified by flight attendants, the pilot announced the aircraft would be returning to Amsterdam two hours into the journey to Detroit, Michigan. That's genuinely horrifying that this rotten fish could be stuck there for... Like, to have maggots in there, you, you know, it, it had to... How long the had you not opened your place. suitcase for? I mean, oh, no. he, the, 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 the person who owned that luggage should also have been, uh, what is it, debarked? Arrested. Yeah, and, uh, and arrested. Yeah, exactly. Disembarked. And disembarked. That's it. <laughs> disembarked. <Yeah. laughs> and that. I said that. that was the disembarked. Disembarked. Like, that's a whole other punishment. Disembarked. 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 And, and arrested. Um, because that's just nasty. Yeah, debanked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you get debanked. <laughs> I don't know. Debank everybody. Rotten fish onto the plane. Some people are nasty. Who was this? Just yeah. think of this rotten fish abroad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, I got the last one. The world of darts has been engulfed in a scandal of a smelly nature after Dan Webster accused his opponent of farting during their match. No. <laughs> so Webster took on Dutchman Ron Moolenkamp in a best of seven legs match. He moved into the lead, 3 0 up, but was pegged back by his rival, ended up losing 4 3. After Mellencamp came up trumps, Webster was visibly furious, refused to shake hands, <laughs> exchanging fiery words with his opponent. Later, he took to social media in a profanity-laden Facebook post accusing his rival of stinking the stage out and having the cheek to deny it. So he, the this, he said ah. the guy farted and the guy wouldn't admit to it. The cheek. Yeah. It's too late for you to apply for that this morning job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my but God. That, that is pretty vile. How bad must have it, must have it smelt for the guy to lose? He was winning up 3-0 and then loses 4-3 because it stank so I think so it must bad. have had a bit of methane in there because... Good lord. A bit of methane. Yeah. Maybe but then again, like darts fish. players don't have the best uh, diet. Really? They do not. I You're right. Lager. Lots of... Lager, very windy. But I'll tell you what. Kebab, I'll tell you lager. what. I'll tell you what. Esther, you have stunk out oh, Tuesday for the last you. time. No, oh, that, that is, is oh. all we've got time for on the oh. talk. Thanks to our panellists, James Max, Esther Kraku, Kevin O'Sullivan and Emma Wolfe. Plank of the Week with Mike Graham is up next. And it's goodbye from us. Good night. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. If it was Osama bin Laden, a terrorist as well, a war criminal as well, would you be giving him a floor? Would you be asking for him to be interviewed and giving a space so he could explain himself? A woman can become a man and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. I don't see any sign of forgiveness from the other members of the family for the terrible lies and disloyalty which he's shown. 
this concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of the street yeah. or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. <laughs> King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. The palace released a new picture of King Charles showing His Royal Highness smiling and buoyant despite the shock news. Move over, Harry. When it comes to celebrity pals, William has just landed one of the biggest stars on the planet. Prince William has only gone and bagged Tom Cruise as a surprise celebrity guest for the London Air Ambulance charity gala he spoke at. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs>